Heat exchangers are devices for transferring heat energy between two or more fluids at different temperatures. Here, we are presenting a CFT simulation training package for simulating every kind of heat exchangers. By clicking on the subscribe button, you will be informed about the newest CFT training videos by Mr. CFT. Or if you are watching the training video, click on the Mr. CFT logo and subscribe. In general, heat exchangers are divided into two groups of shell and tube type and plate type heat exchangers. This CFT training package study about these two general heat exchanger types by investigating six different examples using ANSYS Fluent software. Six different types of heat exchangers are investigated in the CFT simulation training package by ANSYS Fluent. At first, we investigate a simple plate heat exchanger. So the first example is going to simulate a reverse cross-flow plate heat exchanger using ANSYS Fluent software. In the second example, we investigate a more professional plate heat exchanger called Chevra. In this model, water acts as hot and cold fluid flow in heat exchanger. After investigating two different types of plate heat exchanger, it's time to investigate and study shell and tube heat exchangers. In the third simulation, we will study and simulate a spiral heat exchanger. In the example number four, we simulate the performance of phase change material or PCM inside a shell and tube thin heat exchanger. In the project number five, we will investigate the nanofluid effect on a shell and tube heat exchanger considering baffle cut. Also in the final example, again, we investigate the effect of nanofluid on the shell and tube heat exchanger performance. And this time, the only difference with the last project is using helical fin instead of baffle cuts. You can obtain all the related files, including geometry files, mesh files, and also comprehensive training videos by purchasing the CFD training package. Following, we can observe some parts of one of these CFD simulations about plate heat exchanger as a demo. The present problem deals with the simulation of a plate heat exchanger called Chevron. The three-dimensional geometry of the present model is designed by Design Modeler software. Since the model is related to the plate type heat exchanger, it consists of two main parts. I mean hot water flow zone and cold water flow zone. The boundary between these two flow paths is determined by the separator plates or chevron. The non-conformal structured mesh of the present model is carried out by ANSYS meshing software and the element number is almost equal to 640,000. Before setting up the Fluent software for the CFD simulation, we should check the mesh quality. So click on check button and see if it's done or not. In this case, we can see that the mesh quality is all right because it's done. In the viscous model, the S standard K epsilon model has been used. That is a two equation turbulence model that allow the determination of both a turbulent length and time scale by solving two separate transport equation. Uh, the standard K epsilon model is in ANSYS Fluent falls within this class of models and has become the workhorse of practical engineering flow calculations in the time since it was proposed. Uh, robustness, economy, and uh, reasonable accuracy for a wide range of turbulence flows explain its popularity in industrial flow and heat transfer simulations. Also, it is a semi-empirical model. The standard K-Epsilon model is a model based on model transport equations for the turbulent kinetic energy, K, and its dissipation rate, Epsilon. 
The model transport equation for K is derived from the exact equation, while the model transport equation for Epsilon was obtained using um, physical reasoning in the uh, derivation of the K Epsilon model. The assumption is that the flow is fully turbulent and the effect of uh, molecular viscosity are negligible. The standard K Epsilon model is therefore valid only for fully turbulent flows. The liquid and the fluid that is going to be used in this CFT simulation and uh, as the main flow for the heat exchanger is liquid water. So we define all the material properties in the material tab. Before investigating the boundary conditions, we should uh, check the cell zone condition. There are two separated zones uh, of the cold part and the hot part. Uh, both of them are the fluid type and the material for the fluid type is defined as water liquid. The cold in that water temperature is equal to 283.15 degrees of Kelvin. Also, the pressure outlet boundary condition type is set and selected for both outlets of cold and hot. The hot inlet temperature is 60 degrees more than cold inlet temperature that is equal to 343.15. Finally, we should set the last boundary condition in this section that is related to the plate. The plate is uh, the chevron plate. It's a stationary wall and no slip. Since the chevron plate is assumed to be a coupled wall, I mean uh, there are two different zones in both sides of the chevron plate, so it's a coupled wall. And because of that, uh, a shadow is defined for the plate. For setting under relaxation factors, we should say that the pressure-based solver uses under relaxation of equations to control the update of computed variables at each iteration. In ANSYS Fluent, the default under relaxation parameters for all variables are set to values that are near optimal for the largest possible number of cases. These values are suitable for many problems, but for some particularly nonlinear problems, uh, for example, some turbulent flows or high Rayleigh number, natural convection problems, it is prudent to reduce the under relaxation factors initially. It is good practice to begin uh, calculation using the default under relaxation factors if the residuals continue to increase after the first four or five iterations you should reduce the under relaxation factors occasionally you may make changes in the under relaxation factors and resume your calculation only to find that the residuals begin to increase this often results from increasing the under relaxation factors too much. A cautious approach is to save a data file before making any change to the under relaxation factors and uh, to give the solution algorithm a few iterations to adjust to the new parameters. Typically, an increase in the under relaxation factors bring about a slight increase in the residuals, but these increases usually disappear as the solution progresses. If the residuals jumped by a few orders of magnitude, you should consider halting the calculation and returning to the last good data file saved. At the end of the solution process, uh, we are able to obtain all the desired contours, vectors, pass line, and also reports. We also can define and specify uh, every plane in every direction, just like this issue. Here is the two-dimensional uh, pressure contour. 
uh, this is the velocity contour on the Z center plane that it's obvious that near the chevron plates and near the heat exchanger walls the velocity is almost zero one of the most important parameters and uh, results that should be checked in the plate heat exchangers like this simulation of chevron is the uh, wall, wall fluxes the pressure drop in the cold zone is equal to 679 pascal. Also, we can check and see the outlet temperature from the cold outlet and also hot outlet. Here is the summaries of the problem definition and problem solving steps in the table as a review. To benefit from master CFD services, including simulation, consultation and training, Contact our experts via info at signmestercfd.com or www.mestercfd.com. Hope you enjoy.